Welcome everyone to our Let's Play series of Real Farm. Real Farm is a farming simulator that was just released on Steam today. That's right, so we are just getting started. I've played maybe 30 minutes in the game, just enough to get a basic idea and also to make sure the game was actually working on my PC. All of the footage and all the gameplay you're gonna see is on PC. Right now I am playing with a mouse and keyboard, but I do have a Logitech G920 wheel that I use for sim racing that I may try to hook up at some point and just to see if it works in game. At this point, I'm not sure uh, what if any wheel and pedal sets are uh, supported by the game. We'll have to see as time goes on. I know very little about the game other than I picked up on it a couple of months ago when it was added, first added to Steam, added it to my wish list immediately and have been following the development of the game since then. So I'm very excited to get started with the gameplay in our Let's Play series here today. So before we get started in that, I want to briefly take a look through the options. You can see very minimalist design here on the main menu. We've got achievements, credits, in addition to your exit and your play button. Let's take a quick look at the options. Language for me is English since I'm in the United States, but I can tell you there are many other options. So this is uh, apparently in intended to be a worldwide option. Currency, you have two choices between the euro and the dollar. I'm going to leave it at dollar. And then your time scale can be 12 or 24 hour. We're going to leave it on 24 hour. We get into the video options. The resolution is 1080p, which matches the monitor that I'm using to game on. And by default, window mode is on, but I've turned it off so that we're playing in full screen rather than window mode. V-Sync is apparently a trouble spot for the game right now at release because I have tried to turn this off on multiple occasions. I hit apply and nothing changes. So it constantly turns itself back on or either that or it never turns off to begin with. So hopefully they will address that in a future update or patch. Next, we go to the level of detail. 2.0 is the maximum. So we're going to leave that at the default. Maximum there, TXAA on, Bloom also on, I adaptation. Now I have absolutely no idea what this involves. Um, I do know there is eye tracking and head tracking in the game that is supported. I do not have uh, that software or hardware, so that's not something we're going to be getting into here. Um, I, so I'm not sure if this eye adaptation is related to that or not, but by default it's on, so I'm going to leave it as is. That's something we may play around with though in the future. Ambient occlusion is on. Tessellation is, uh, the quality for tessellation is very high. We have some options there. You can turn it off. Very low, low, medium, high, and then very high. Shadow quality is high. You have three options here. Off, low, and high. And then terrain quality is pretty interesting because there are no adjustments. Full is your only option here. Then finally, we get down to grass render distance. Um, this is one of the disappointments that I've had so far in the game. Uh, one of them because 50 is the maximum, zero is the minimum, and I really couldn't tell much of any difference between the two. And what this ends up, uh, or what I assume this is supposed to uh, relate to is we all know that in, in general in these types of games, there is a circle around you of a certain distance where things render at a higher quality level, a higher level of detail. And then beyond that, it starts to diminish the quality and not spawn in certain items and not draw certain items in order to help the frames. Well, in this game, that circle seems to be very small. And even me making this adjustment doesn't seem to really do a whole lot, if anything. So a little bit underwhelmed by that adjustment, but we'll get into that more as we get into the gameplay, where you can see some examples of that. Next, we'll move into the audio controls. Master volume is at 100%. Music volume is turned off for the purposes of our recording and uh, publishing this to YouTube. Don't want to get into any potential copyright claims, so we turn that off. The ambient volume, or the world volume, is at 100%. We want to see what type of, of environmental sounds that they have in the game for sure. I enjoy those. And the vehicle volume. I've turned down a little bit to 70% simply because I don't want the sound of the tractor and or the implements to be too terribly overwhelming for the purposes of our recording. And we may have to 
adjust on this a little bit moving forward. Next, we come into another one of my uh, issues that I've had so far in my short time with the game, and that is the key bindings. You notice that there aren't any. What you're seeing on your screen is an Xbox controller, and that's not what I have hooked up to my PC. I am using a mouse and keyboard. In fact, my wheel that I mentioned earlier, the Logitech G920, is not hooked up right now to the PC. So it's not that it's recognizing that. I've tried any number of things, and this is the screen that always comes up. So what that means to me is you can see there's a lot of information that could be available here uh, on screen, but right now I have no idea what any of these bindings are or if they exist for the keyboard and mouse. So we're going to have to learn that as we go on. Uh, I also mentioned that I do not have the eye tracking. So there is a link here that you can click on. Unfortunately for me, the link did not work. It took me to uh, the main website for this, uh, but the, the link itself d directly gave me an error message. So if you're interested in learning more about the eye tracking uh, software, then you can get more information there. But for our purposes, it will not apply. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here. I don't think we actually changed anything, but just in case we made any adjustments, those will be applied. Now we're going to move into the play screen and you can see we have options for three saved games. We're going to choose the first option, double click on that, and we have the option to select our difficulty level. These are basically what you would expect. The easy mode starts you out with capital that is not a loan. It's actually a gift and you don't have to pay it back. The maximum loan amount is higher and you also pay less interest rate. So again, some things that are going to make the game a little bit easier. Uh, product prices are low, market prices are high. Again, trying to help you to earn as much money as possible. Normal mode is sort of in between. Let's talk a little bit about the hard mode. In a hard game, your starting capital is entirely a loan, whereas in easy, it is entirely a gift, and normal, it is half and half. So here in hard mode, it's going to be entirely a loan to get you started, and your maximum loan amounts are lower, and you're also going to pay higher interest rates. Product prices are higher and market prices are lower. Also, vehicles have to be manually started. So interesting that you get the three options. It, they're basically understandable. We're going to choose the easy option because I'm not looking for uh, extreme difficulty here. I'm simply looking to relax and have a good time. And hopefully you will join me for that uh, career playthrough. Now you have two options here. Select your game mode of career or free play. In free play, you're going to start out with your own farm and a little bit of equipment, and then you can feel free to take on any jobs that you want or spend all of your time working on your own fields. Now, for the purposes of our Let's Play series, we're gonna use the career mode, where we're simply gonna start out as a farm hand doing jobs for other farmers until we can make enough money to start purchasing our own equipment and then ultimately to get our own animals, uh, whether they be, I think there are four types of animals within the game. We're gonna try to get into animals, we're gonna have fields, and the whole thing. But for now, we're going to start from the very beginning in career mode. And as the game loads up, there's a few things that we're going to talk about while we're getting started in the game. Uh, first, let's read our, our message here from Matt Davis, our first farmer that we're going to encounter. It says, hey there, my name is Matt Davis. Nice to meet you. This must be your first day in town. If you do your best on your job, you just might become my protege. All right, so this guy is going to take us under his wing, and we're going to get our first jobs from him. This is also our first opportunity to look around in the game world. And there are a few things that jumped out to me pretty quick. Now, you see the shadows here on the ground, but you notice that as we look around, there are no other shadows except at short distance from us. And as we move around, you can see the shadows fill out as we move. So that is a very, very small area immediately surrounding us that we see any type of of shadow so that worries me a little bit uh, i was hoping for more a, a bigger area but you can see sort of the 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 circular area around us where we're going to get the most detail um, i know in their marketing for this game that they had mentioned that this this game world was in 4k resolution so obviously i'm playing on a 1080p monitor so i'm not going to get the the full 4k but um I had expected a little bit more from the graphics, I won't lie. Um, at the beginning, 
So I'm a little underwhelmed by the graphics so far, but they're playable, and we're going to go with it and make the best of it we can. Who knows? Maybe we'll find uh, some tips and tricks on how to increase that as we move forward. And then, of course, you got to keep in mind, the game is just at release. So uh, there's plenty of time for updates and further changes to the game. I wanted to see if we could check the mail there. Apparently, we cannot. So as we move in, you can see in the top right-hand corner, uh, it says learning the basics, get into the tractor marked on the mini map. All right, so we're going to do that momentarily, and it's easily identifiable by the blue marker that comes down from the sky. But first, I want to see what we have over here. Okay, so this is where we can sleep. Um, you notice at the top of the screen, over in the right-hand corner, next to the time, which is 10.09 in the morning, we have a meter, which apparently is a stamina meter, and I'm guessing that we'll need to come over here and go to sleep in order to refill that stamina. So that's an interesting thing. I would actually like it if in the options we could have a choice to turn that on or off, or at least have some sort of multiplier that would allow us to work, if not indefinitely, at least a multiplier that would enable us to work longer or shorter as we see fit. But uh, to this point, I have not seen that type of option. All right, so as we walk around, notice a couple of implements there that we're going to be connecting to our tractor. Also, I see we've got some bug spray or insecticide there that I'm sure we're going to need before too terribly long. All right, got a good-sized barn there. Oh, not quite as large as I thought it was going to be once you get inside, considering the size of some of these tractors. Then as we move around, uh, you can see seeds. And this would be fertilizer, I'm guessing. And then finally over here, I'm guessing this is where we would wash off our tractors and keep them clean. All right, and then you see the fuel just ahead over there. So some of the basics uh, that you would expect to have around the farm uh, at your disposal. All right, so let's go ahead and get in the tractor. All right, press Q to hold, hold that down, enter the vehicle. All right, we'll press Q. Again, I wish I could rebind some of these things to other buttons but as of now i don't know of any way to do that all right so we've got the mouse to change the camera moving it around i can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out okay and again you can see the the shadows as they come and go depending on how far we are not a big fan of that all right now we've got our our blue markers that are around our implements so oh wow this turning radius is huge all right, so we're going to have a hard time here. Now, it tells you the controls are the up arrow to accelerate. Right now, I'm actually using the W, A, S, and D keys. The, the key that it says for braking, um, I'm actually not even sure what that's supposed to mean. All right, let's go ahead and press 1 to attach that. And let's see, left control, I know deals with that so we can detach the tool but there's nothing so we can't lower or raise this okay so apparently it just goes wherever it goes and we don't have any control over that all right let's go over here and see if we can get in front oh boy these controls all right put that back in there get right up there oh goodness gracious that's too far all right let's go ahead and hitch that up all right, so now we've got our plow onto the back, and there it is over there. I see the, it says drive to the field, no problem. We'll drive on over there. And I could just barely see that. Now we have a, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, we do have a mini map. Uh, for me, a lot of this was, it's too jumbled up. It was too much on it that I couldn't really tell. All right, so we're gonna need to plow this field. All right, so let me just go ahead and go around the side here. You can see the as we drive around the grass, the 3D grass being drawn in, and that is a very short distance. You can see, uh, I can't really tell much difference between that and the zero setting that we looked at in the options. All right, let's go ahead and line this up as best I can. This is going to be, I'm sure, a terrible job by me trying to plow correctly. I'm going to be all outside of the field and... And this is going to look pretty ugly, but for the purposes of our our demonstration here, just to get going in the game and get an idea of what some of the options are, 
You notice as we get ready to begin plowing the field, at the top of the screen we have five icons right in the center. And it's, these are only available once we are either in the menu uh, looking, or in the map rather, looking at one of the fields or if we're actually on one of the fields working. And we'll look at these and what they mean a little bit more, but you can see to the left hand side, uh, we have two of them that are in red. One of those is to the far left is the fact that has this field been plowed and it definitely has not because we haven't done that yet. All right, so now we've got our plow ready to go. Let's go ahead and left control, bring up our menu. You can see we have our two implements. This would be to detach from the front of the tractor. This would be our plow in the rear of the tractor. And we've got rotate right and rotate left. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate right and get that in line. You can see again, we're gonna be off a little bit. Why is our, why is our tractor floating? That doesn't seem right. Okay, anyway. And now you notice it says plow the field within the time limit, which is a little over 24 minutes at this point. Open the vehicle controls and lower the hitch to start plowing. All right, so we're ready to go on that. So let's just go ahead and start plowing. And you'll notice that as we start plowing, there is a blue progress bar in the top right hand corner that is starting to fill up. All right, and I'm going to try to keep it as straight as I can, but I'm not going to make any illusions that I'm actually going to keep straight and do a great job at this. Our goal here is simply to get this blue progress bar completely filled. And I do know that we're not going to have to do the entire field. So what I'm going to do is actually start taking some shortcuts here and we're just going to make our way around the field. The point here is we're just trying to learn some of the basics, not trying to make it look pretty at this point. And you can see our blue progress bar is indeed filling out. So I'm going to do the best job I can to get as much of this field plowed as I can with no illusion that it's actually going to be perfect. We're going to try to get this done as quickly as possible so that we can move on to the second thing. Plowing is a very basic uh, and good idea to start the game with that. Also, this enables us to learn that indeed you can see that we can plow outside of the field itself. So that lets you know that we do have at least some freedom into the area of making fields bigger. Uh, let's go ahead and continue our our trek around the side of the field. We won't worry about respecting the field boundaries. Now also, you can see at the top of the screen, our icon to the far left that indicates how much of the field has been plowed. You can see that that is now increasing. All right, so we're getting it done now. Let's go ahead and continue on. Try not to overlap too terribly much. All right, so we're definitely learning the basics. Let me swing that around. Another one of the things I really wish I could do, in addition to uh, being able to adjust the key bindings, I really wish the game would allow me, hold on, let me try to make this corner here. This is gonna be tough. Can we try to get it all? Yeah, we got pretty much all of that. I wish that I could adjust the sensitivity because this thing is very, very sensitive, particularly on the camera. So I can just barely touch the mouse and it will not take much at all to swing the mouse around and the camera around quite a bit in game. So hopefully in a future update, they will release the ability for us to adjust the sensitivity. All right, so far so good. You can see we're at approximately halfway done with our introductory task, our very first task in our career mode. Now, normally, you know, in future gameplay footage, I might just skip through some of this, uh, but for our purposes now, we're just getting started. We wanna learn about the tools, we wanna learn about the game, so this is not the time that I want to, to really skip around a whole lot. I wanna see how this works and what happens when we get to full completion here. We definitely want to find out how much money we're going to make. Ooh, I made this. Wow, that's way, way too wide of a turn there. Uh, but I definitely want to see, you know, sort of how this whole process works. Uh, we've already learned, 
Yikes. I feel like the plow is actually guiding me at this point more than me guiding the plow. So we're starting off, we're plowing our first field, which is definitely uh, how you want to get started. We can see the icon at the top of the screen to the far left is we're now at halfway on the icon and you can see that our progress bar is also past halfway. So in a very general sense, they're trying to give us some idea of what is going on with the field. Now it also indicates by the, the fact that we have five icons showing up on the field that we're going to have multiple things to deal with with this field. So it's not going to be as simple as just plow it, cultivate it, sow it, and then harvest it and then do it all over again. We're going to have some other things to take care of. And if you look from the far right, the insecticide looks like we're going to have some insects that we're going to have to deal with. Then we're going to have in the middle of these icons, we've got water, which indicates that we're going to have to make sure that our farmland stays well watered. So all of these are good ideas and it's definitely going to give us a lot that we're going to have to deal with uh, during our gameplay. All right, so our terrible job at plowing this field has gotten us to what looks like about three quarters of the way done with our progress bar. And that's really all we care about at this particular point. Moving our way through the first uh, portions of the game, which serve as a basic tutorial. All right, we're going to swing around here. And let's see how good of a job I can do turning this thing. Uh, yeah, again, at this point, I feel like the plow is steering me as much as I'm steering the plow, and sometimes more. All right, so yeah, it's my guess at this point that we're going to reach 100% completion on that progress bar before we actually get this full field uh, actually plowed. Interesting. That's actually, I think, a good thing for the purposes of the tutorial, because otherwise you could end up in a situation where you were stuck at like 98 or 99 percent completion, and you're stuck having to ride around the field trying to see which parts you've actually missed. So it's good that it's not going to make us actually do 100 percent of the field in order to get the 100 percent progress. All right. Yeah definitely can see the progress bar moving up quite a bit there and we are getting very close to being finished also I'll tell you that I am running this thing at maximum speed my finger has been on the W key since we started this so the tractor is going as fast as the game will allow it now granted you don't want it to go fast whenever you're plowing and the plow would create quite a bit of resistance but it's interesting to note that the game does not simply allow you to go extremely fast also I do believe they have in the game uh, a simulation that will not allow you to take the most basic cheapest tractor and hook up any and all implements to it so they are trying to implement uh, realism in that respect as well which is good to see we'll have an opportunity to upgrade our equipment and we'll need to upgrade our equipment throughout our playthrough in order to keep up with uh, the different fields and the different sizes. Now we'll have to take a look. Oh, there we go. We're done. So yeah, we had uh, quite a bit. You can see there's quite a bit of field that has not been uh, plowed at this point, and yet we've reached 100%. So it says, well, you're really talented at this. Now return the equipment. Okay, so very, very draconian there at the end. Now return the equipment. So apparently he was tired of being nice to us. All right, so let's go ahead and fold our equipment back up. All right, a little delay there. We're done with that. And let's head back to the main building and return our equipment. So there is our wonderful job of plowing the field. And I'm trying to notice as we drive along, do I see shadows? I do not. All right, let's hope we don't get run over crossing the road. Oh my goodness, look out. A flying plow. All right, so I see no shadows on the ground at all. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't see shadows from buildings, from our tractor, from anything. That's a bit odd. I would have expected to see a lot more shadows than that. All right, well, that went great. I've got another job for you listed on my job board.
Make sure to accept it before someone else does. All right, so that sort of hints that there are other people in the world, not necessarily multiplayer, because as far as I know, there is no multiplayer uh, planned for the game, at least not in the immediate future. We'll see how things go uh, down the road. But maybe some AI workers around. Um, I'm hoping that in particular, once we get to have our own land and our own farm as we grow, that we'll be able to hire workers to complete these tasks for us. Okay, so now we're getting our reward, $2,543. Not bad for what in game time amounts to about two hours worth of work, I think. Uh, the equipment bonus would be if we were using our own equipment in order to complete the task. So that's something we'll have to look at in the future. And then over to the left-hand side of the window, you can see that we have a reputation marker with Mr. Davis. In this case, we've gotten a small portion, uh, looks like maybe a fifth, maybe a sixth, something like that, uh, that is filled out. So interesting that he's happy, and as long as we keep doing work for him, he'll be happier. Now, I'm not sure what that will actually get us. Will it get us better rewards? Will it get us the ability to maybe, if we get him at complete happiness, maybe he'll sell us some land? I'm not sure. So we'll have to see about that as time goes on. All right, we got a quick save, and magically, all the equipment is gone. Okay, so there's no more equipment. So I guess we're... We're walking now. All right, let's head back over to the job board, which is over here next to the truck. All right, let's cross the road without looking. Okay, we didn't become roadkill, so we're, we're good there. We're gonna press on E to see the jobs. And now you can see field number four, which I would assume is the same field that we've been working on. And yeah, learn how to cultivate a field. So we just got done plowing the field. Now we're going to cultivate it. And you can see the equipment that we're going to be used. Of course, we're going to be using his equipment. Uh, no equipment bonus, 2,543, which seems to be the amount. I'm sure that amount is reduced when you're in the increased difficulties. All right, we're going to accept that. But unfortunately, we don't have time in our video today to get to this particular job. We'll have to wait until our Let's Play video number two before we get to job number two. So thank you very much for joining me as we begin our adventure in Real Farm, the farming simulator just released today on Steam. And stay tuned for more Real Farm coverage here at Deep Hit Gaming.